Now is the only time that action can occur. The present moment is the only time in which we can do anything. So if not now, when? If I want to do something, now is the perfect time to do it because it's literally the only time anything can be done. You're poised for action in the present moment. This is the moment that you've been waiting for. Your whole life has actually conspired to bring you to this exact point. Now is the time to act. You're paying a price by sitting there being miserable. You might say, well, the devil I know is better than the one I don't. It's like, don't be so sure of that. The clock is ticking. And if you're miserable in your job now and you change nothing, in five years you'll be much more miserable and you'll be a lot older. The next three months and donate that time to your future self. Commit to something that you're going to thank yourself for doing a year from today. Just accept the fact right now that the next 90 days of your life do not belong to the current version of yourself. It belongs to the future version of yourself. Because all it takes is three months of consistent action to set yourself up for a successful year. This time next year, you don't want to look back and say to yourself, damn, I wish I spent my time doing this. So how are you going to spend the next three months? Are you going to set yourself up for success or is it just going to be another year? You have it in you if you choose to keep going. Because if you have that energy today, then why can't you have it tomorrow? And why can't you have it the next day? And why can't you have it the day after that? One foot in front of the other, one foot in front of the other. Just like for you on your journey in life, that's sometimes what it feels like. You feel like you have nothing left in the tank, but sometimes you just connect to something and that something causes you to take just one more step. Because every day is a battle. Every day is a battle because your mind wants to choose the path of least resistance. Every day. But you don't become better by, by ever doing that. Mm. You become normal. And I don't want to be normal. Everything in your life right now, everything you have, everything you do not have right now are all results of your past actions. And that's hard to accept for a lot of us. But until you accept that, you will not be able to move forward. And when you do accept that, you take ownership and control over your life. Short-term pleasure equals long-term pain. And short-term pain equals long-term pleasure. Everything you're looking for is on the other side of short-term suffering. And everything you don't want is on the other side of avoiding that suffering. It's, a, it's many sprints inside a marathon of life where the winning line, finish line, is constantly changing. It's constantly moving. It's constantly evolving. Sadness comes from a perceived lack of options. It's why it feels like hopelessness. You don't know what to do. Anxiety comes from many options, but no priorities. And you solve that by making a decision. And you solve sadness by figuring out what to do, which means that it's something that you can solve through knowledge. So there's only two things that control the quality of your life. Please jot them down. For the rest of your life, you want to remember. The quality of my life is controlled by two things, meaning and emotion. Meaning and emotion. The meaning you give to things controls the emotion that you feel. Develop a sense of urgency. Get the reputation as the person who does things fast. Develop a reputation for speed and dependability and your future will just open up in front of you. We're working fast, working fast, that sense of urgency. Act now, do it now, do it now, do it now. Most people just sort of shuffle through life. You know, they get to it when they feel like it. But all the excellent people, well, all the high performers have a sense of urgency. Things never feel like they're changing in the moment. Day by day, minute by minute, it's easy to feel like you're making no progress. So you get frustrated and feel like you're not doing enough. But the reality is, everything is compounding. The day things feel different doesn't happen overnight. The miles you have to overcome aren't conquered in one step. So just keep moving. All of us walk around with stories about our lives. Why choices were made, why things went wrong. Stories are the way we make sense of our lives. But what happens when the stories we tell are misleading or incomplete or just wrong? 
Well, instead of providing clarity, these stories keep us stuck. The way we narrate our lives shapes what they become. We talk so much in our culture about getting to know ourselves, but part of getting to know yourself is to unknow yourself, to let go of the one version of the story you've been telling yourself so that you can live your life and not the story that you've been telling yourself about your life. What would happen if you looked at your story and wrote it from another person's point of view? What would you see now from this wider perspective? Just keep on going down that path, that path of alignment, that path of truth, that path of love and authenticity and gratitude. Keep going down that path, you know, because that's the path where you will find yourself. Once you understand that you can control the future of your life, it gives you the single most powerful emotion that you can feel, hope. And most people live in a state of quiet desperation. They can't pay their bills, they don't feel healthy, they wake up and they're anxious. So why are these things taking place? And if you can address that and understand that if you want to feel different, you must believe that that which you want is already yours and that time-space continuum just has to catch up. You think you have to become something to become someone. I'm telling you right now, you already were created a someone, a special someone at that. You know the statistics of you being you. But yet, we're sitting here thinking that we have to become something to be great. For a lot of us in here, our next level is not upward. It's going inward. Nobody is going to save you. Nobody is going to make it easy for you. Nobody can live your life for you, endure your pain for you, choose your struggles for you. Nobody can experience the growth that comes from loss for you. Nobody can build your confidence through a thousand tiny failures for you. Nobody can lie awake crying about some inconsolable loss that hurts so much it creates a bottomless pit of emptiness for you. Nobody can learn the lessons for you. You get to do that. You have the honor and privilege to suffer and overcome that suffering, only to suffer and overcome again and again and again. This is called being a lie. Don't let yourself slip away. Come back to the moment. Set your intention. And go do what you need to do. I think we have to clearly define what optimism is. Optimism is the undying belief that the future is bright, but it allows for reality to exist. And I think complacency has no room to exist in blind positivity, or is, as we're calling it, sort of blind optimism. So for example, we can be in darkness, we can be in difficulty, and we can be in struggle. And the optimist says, look, these are hard times. And I do not know how long we are going to be in these hard times, but what is necessary is for us to come together, work hard, take care of each other, and I am confident that we will get through this and come out of this stronger than we went in. That's what optimism sounds like. It's hard to believe things that you can't see. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe these things. But if you can actually sit there and have a conversation with yourself and believe that all things are possible, then everything is possible because like I said, it all starts with the mind and the mind is, is the controlling factor of everything. The mind is like, is like the steering wheel of your life. And if you can't take control of your mind, somebody else will control it for you. To edit your life, what's most important to you. And when you do that, you do that exercise with yourself, things become clear rather quickly. Say, I want to be the best, or I want to do this, or I want to do that. And if things in your life don't line up with that, get rid of that. It's not important. I think that it's always the toughest times in your life that define who you are, much more so than the easiest times or the best times. So failures are typically some of the hardest times of your life. So when I look back and I see all sort of the pivotal moments in my life, it was always the struggle. It was always the failure that motivated me, not the like loveliness of success.
One day at a time, you're gonna say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And you do those things. And you wake up the next day and you say, I'm still in this shit shitty situation. I don't have any confidence, I don't feel good. But I did do what I was supposed to do yesterday. And that's where it starts. It starts this little bitty win that is seemingly insignificant. And then you go around the second day and you say, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this. And you do those things. So you're doing these things day in and day out and day in and day out. And eventually those things that on the first day were so f***ing hard for you are now just part of who you are. And not only are they part of who you are, you feel great about who you're becoming. Stop thinking too much. Don't go into the past. Don't go into the future. Be in the present. Because only then it's possible that the mind is free, capacity is free, and now you can completely immerse into whatever you are doing. And this means you have arrived. You have arrived. You have to align with what's most important to you, what you really believe in, what's meaningful for you. That if you settle for something less than that, well, you might have to do it because you have to pay your bills. You can't ever give up pursuing what's going to make you feel most alive because ultimately I really believe Probably the most, most sacred thing in our lives that we can give another human being besides our love is our labor. But when nobody's watching, what are you doing? And so if success today was your boss and success was watching you over the last seven days with the sound off and there was a video camera following you around it, is success impressed with you? Is success saying, I will see you soon, my friend? Or what if success was watching you, they go, wow, the actions sure don't match up to the words. Because at the end of the day, the truth of the matter is, what we do produces results, not what we say. What we do ultimately dictates the results in our life. So think about how you feel when somebody breaks that contract when breaks that commitment to you. Everything's done, handshake, everything's negotiated, all the way it's done, it's over with. And they said they're not gonna do it. You should be more pissed off with breaking a commitment to yourself. And people do it all the time. People do it all the time. One of the best quotes I've ever heard on this subject is from Rumi. He said, yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. Most people aren't happy, bro. Most people spend a third of their life working at a job they don't like so they can make not enough money in a relationship that they don't want to be in, doing things that they don't want to do. Most people have an idea of who they want to be, but they're not doing a single thing about it. So if that's not the outcome that you want, why do you do the exact same things that they do? If you want different, then you're gonna have to be different. And being different comes with its own set of consequences. People aren't gonna understand you. You're gonna miss parties. You're not gonna have as much fun according to the world. You're gonna have to say no to yourself a lot of the time. You're either gonna have to face the consequences of being different now or wishing you were different later.